All right, good morning, Terrell here. We've got a busy day today. We have one car to work on for the both of the boys here. We're gonna get a lot of things done. This is a 2000, I think it's the 12 WRX sedan. And I'll show you underneath here, she's completely stock. So our job today, we're gonna do a downpipe on this, injectors, fuel pump, intercooler, air oil separator, the, the kind that goes into the actual uh, oil um, install tube, whatever it's called, oil feed tube, oil whatever tube. And then finishing it off with some tuning. And then I also have a power steering rack on this car, but I don't think I'm gonna record that part because you've already seen a video of me doing that on a hatch. So let's look at the new parts. We have a Process West intercooler. We have some sort of a transmission bracket that I don't think we're putting on. And we've got, I guess that's probably for this intercooler. I'm not quite sure yet. We have a downpipe. And then this is that arrow separator. We have AUS injectors with plug and play adapters I already checked. We have a fuel pump. We have a nice little intake here. I have to scale this and uh, get this running perfectly with it. I'm not sure quite where to start, but I think I'm gonna start with the basics. So let's just do the air intake and the intercooler, or at least I'll remove the old intercooler and then uh, probably work on downpipe after that. As you can see, that took some insane coursing to get that off. But now I'm gonna remove the rest of the box and then the part below, and then get the center core off next. Well, got the inner core off. All right, I got the inner core off and the intake off. Now I'm gonna work on the downpipe. There should be exactly nine bolts to this, I believe. I'll show you where they all are so you don't not confuse on a stock down pipe. We have one, two, three, four, five right here. You have number six right there on the transmission. And then you have down there on the transmission farther. Okay. We have one more. It's right in that hanger there and then we have one more right there one more right there so it makes nine or ten down pipe has been removed and i just removed the o2 sensor from it that was right here it's right here now i'm gonna go ahead and install it in this new down pipe and then install the down pipe back on the car just like that o2 sensor is in go ahead and install this down pipe now down pipe is back in Got our bolted down on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut here on. Bolt and nut, bolt and nut, and then the bolt and then the nut here. Okay, down pipe is now tight. So next step we're gonna work on here is gonna probably put the injectors in. Uh, a little bit of pain in the butt sometimes. Sometimes it goes really smoothly. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and install the injectors. I'm gonna pull the little plates off. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. The last video I did on injectors, I didn't show super great detail of how I actually pull them. So I'm gonna try to get the best video I can possible of how to do it. Uh, swap out the injectors and then the intake. I'll have to go after that anyway, so it's kind of in the way. But you want to start pulling this off. Looking in here, seeing your fuel pump fuse, which is right there, which is right there, and pulling that out so we don't have any more fuel pressure. I'm gonna start with this side and pull this side off. Move this tank kind of out of the way. And then you have a bolt for this bracket here. We're gonna have one, I believe, on the back side over here. I think we have one, we have two, one there and one there. We probably can't see that very well on camera. One there and one there we have to remove. You just have to get like a long extension and a 12 and get those bolts off. All right, to get the back one loose, I had to stick this guy along it and then just kind of put it on the side and just pop it loose i took off the crank or the cam sensor and the oil control valve um i'll go ahead and remove it though and then remove that last bolt on the back well i got this stupid plate off 
Now to pull the injectors off. I'm gonna do this in real time, I believe. I've got one bolt to take off right there. I gotta loosen this line up. I gotta take off that nut, I mean that bolt, and then the one right there as well that's behind this coolant reservoir. And then it should come off. I think I'm gonna have to move this TGV motor right here. If I'm not mistaken, I'll take that bolt out and then a 10 below it. And then I can get these two injectors out. Time to remove these injectors. Got one clip here. I'm gonna push in and just pull it up and it should pop right off. Let's see if I can get this to move. Got a little bit of tension here, but it should come right off. I got one off. It was a little more struggle than I thought. And I'm just gonna get the back one just sitting right there. There's injector number one out. A lot of disgustingness right up in there. And number two is at least out of the rail. Actually, Tech, this is number three. All right, there's injector out. And here's the new ones. So I already have plug and play adapters. That's the little adapters that are right there. And these are, as shown right there, 1,000 cc injectors. Now we'll go ahead and install the new ones. We put the rear one in first, and then the, the front one. I usually put them in the rail, like, and then I pop them in the bottom. But sometimes I do it the opposite way. It just depends on how easy it sits. Let's see, here goes number three, technically. Make sure you get all three bolts started. They are all nice and tight now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the plug and play adapters and then plug in the TGV and the oil line back on. And then I'll start doing the other side. And then after all of them are in, I'm gonna go ahead and put that fuse in and make sure we don't have any leaks feel wise, obviously. This unfortunately is taking me a lot longer than I thought I was going to. Um, but I got the back bolt out of the plate finally and I'm about to remove the plate. And just to be easy, for ease of access, I removed the oil uh, fill tube as well. I, good morning. I ran out of uh, daylight last night and my flashlights weren't working. So I just busted out the driver's side. I got both injectors out and both injectors back in. I got the plate back in, the oil fill tube back on, and then the air pump back on. Um, and then I got the intercooler back on, so let me show you that. Here's your pretty intercooler, nice process west, just kind of very simple, it just goes on here. And then the back has a large tube that comes down and down to the throttle body. And then this is the stock stuff up here. And then I'm installing this as per customer request. This one here is going to go to this line here on the back. The middle is going to go to the line on the intake right there and then this one is going to go to this line right here so it's just it's supposed to separate the air and the oil and basically put it back in in the that tube very difficult to show on camera but i just removed the stock air to oil separator tubing so now the new aero separator will bolt up exactly like this but just with different lines 
the kit came with some of these uh, these pieces and I'm using the old tube plus this and then just tightening this on it and then I'm gonna put the tube around and then around to the arrow separate like that Okay, I got the arrow separator lines all on. I'll show you how I ran them. So the middle one here is gonna come across and down to right there like it's supposed to go to. And then this line here comes across, goes to right here. And then this one comes across and it kind of swirls and then it goes back in and it sits right attached to the sensor that's on this side, the PCV sensor. The white one right there. So that's done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the intake and then I think the fuel pump. I believe the mods are done after that, just tuning. intake installed once i got this thing on you pretty much just get these two bolts lined up after you remove this bracket and then of course get these two on and it's pretty simple there so tops all done now just the fuel pump and then tuning if you haven't seen my video on how to do a fuel pump on a deborah x um go ahead and watch it i'll wait but uh i'm gonna go ahead and pull this out real quick and then we'll i'll just show you once it's out how it looks uh, what fuel pumps in it and then i'll show you what fuel pump you need uh, with the extra clips on the sides and how I install them. All right, fuel pump hanger is coming out. Look at that. Nice and easy here, and she's out. So you can't see her super well. A little bit of fuel drain come across here. This part I'm gonna try to do on camera the best I can. We adjust it a little bit like that, I think. I just put one screwdriver in the side over here and pull that tab open, and then one in the side over here and pull that open, and then I push down at the same time. And you wanna move this right here. This, uh, sorry, if you wanna remove this sensor in here, or the, yeah, the, the fuel pump harness. There we go, that's out now. You can see that I lift it up. And then, like I said, you want to put one in one side. You want to use one, I'll use a longer one on one side. Break the tab loose. And I don't mean break it, obviously, I just mean move it. And then loosen this side up. And then you're gonna push it down, and it's gonna basically force it down. So it's gonna go like that kind of. And then you're gonna, it's gonna help you sort of push it all down. When you get it, it will sometimes feel like you kind of broke something, but then you just kind of pull, and she sucks right out. And that is definitely an OEM fuel pump, or equivalent. And now we are throwing in this AEM 340 LPH beautiful fuel pump. It can support ethanol and everything else. When you do these, the old one, you're going to pull this little retainer clip off like that. You're going to put that on this new pump. And then the new pump has to have these side tabs for these year cars. For older cars, you don't have to have the tabs, but for these ones, you need it so it sticks in there correctly. So that's on, and then you need to put two O-rings on here. I believe they come in the bag, they do. So both of these guys, that way you have a correct flow and you don't have to worry about any kind of uh, low fuel pressure issue. One like that, boom. And then the second one, and then before you put these on, you were to look inside of there and see how we see an O-ring still. We gotta get that O-ring right there out. There we go, O-ring is out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install this fuel pump with the new fuel filter bag. 
and then I'll go ahead and install it back in the container. I'm just going to time lapse all of this. When you get her in, she'll go right back in nicely. And then don't forget to plug this back in up here. It's pretty simple. You just kind of turn it, pull it down, and like that, snaps right in. And now I'm going to drop this back in this container. I'm going to pull the O-ring out of the bottom of there and set it on top of here. And then this should go back together nicely. All right, before I just put that cover back on, I'm gonna go ahead and prime it and make sure we have good fuel pressure and make sure that nothing pops off and uh, that nothing just somehow came off while I was putting it back in. Good, fuel pressure. Yep, got fuel pressure. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put that cover back on in the back, put the back seat back in, and then I'm gonna plug my laptop in, pull this tune off, and then I'm gonna show you just the basics of setting up these injectors because anyone can do this. It's not like it's hard. And then uh, I'll go ahead and make the actual maps and tune this car. All right, if you're gonna pull the tune off of one of these cars, you need to pull, Use uh, I use EC Flush. And for this vehicle, we're gonna go Can Vehicle 07 Plus and you're gonna go Select. And then you're gonna press the big blue button. Boom. You're gonna switch the ignition to on and then press the OK button quickly, like boom and boom. And then, it, Oh, that usually means it's locked by an access port. All right, I just tried it again and actually got in. So just kidding, it was just my timing. Anyways, it's going to pull the memory from the ECU, and then I get to look at it. Now, this is the one thing I will show you. So we're going to go down to injector duty cycle, and I mean, sorry, injector flow scaling. So it says 550 is what these factories scale at, okay? Now, on this new sheet, it says they are 1,000s. They flow at about a thousand. So we're going to enter literally just 1,000 in this bar. This is not magic. This isn't just basic D equals, and then you go 1,000, enter. Okay. Then you're going to open up injector latency. And on this sheet, they give you, it also gives you the latency. You need to find your fuel pressure. So in this car, we're about 43 PSI. So you're going to follow that column down and match it up with the percentages here. And plug and play these numbers in and then the car will start this is just so you can at least get the car running if you need to uh, to get to a tuner it's very basic you just install the exact numbers they give you and typically they're very spot on all right tune is on turn this car off on position for 10 seconds four five six seven eight nine ten there we go look at that now, let's see how happy she is. All right, right off the bat, we've got, look at that, it's adding 12, 14% fuel currently, just slowly learning its way. We'll see what learning ends up being, and then we'll add fuel or take away fuel based on that. This is probably all gonna be due to mass airflow scaling. I kept it stock just because I wanted to start with injectors tuned in, but since it's adding that much more fuel, I'm gonna have to add more fuel on the, on the mass airflow scale, and then this should be good to go there may have just been the car trying to correct on its own we're not learning anything yet and we are still adding a little bit of fuel but it's dropped from 18 percent as you can see is the max down to 10 percent so it's slowly getting there everything else looks good relative pressure and stuff looks all right so we're just letting this thing get warmed up and see how much fuel we have to add well, i just applied a correction value i did an uh, equation and mass servo scaling are brought up and now we're basically perfect so we're gonna have to drive this and see how it stays, but we've got it much, much closer to being perfect at idle. Couple little driving videos just for the sound quality. See how this all sounds? Nice little downshift, a little bit of boost here. Woo, she sounds good. Sounds healthy. Do a nice little second gear here. There we go. She's 
a ripper. Look at that. Let me show you some cool old data we got. We're using 54% of the injectors. At 17-ish pounds boost, 17.5. Uh, still AFRs are just gorgeous sit idle and uh, she's making some good power now If you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching Just uh, bolt-ons and tuning